Welcome to the Cabot High School STEM Night. My name is Evan Crow, And I'm Paige Rudiger. Tonight, we'll be giving you an in-depth look at what STEM is all about. STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. Science will be a major part of tonight's events, including four different sections. So let's go ahead and send it over to Avonlea Kelly and Evan Tonneson. Good evening, guys. Thank you, guys. We're here in Miss Ursher's room for some really cool science experiments today. Today, we have Molly here with us. She is the STEM Club president. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on? Yeah, so we're CHS STEM Club, and we're here today to do some fun science experiments to get kids excited about science. Okay, guys, I think it's time for some experiments. What do y'all say? Yeah! As you can see, they are really excited. Let's get to it. Hey, everybody. So we have some... Uh, Guess here, why don't you tell them who you are? I'm Connor. And I'm Boston. Tell them how old you are. I'm 12. I am almost 12. These are gonna be our helpers to do our STEM Club virtual science activity. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna do something we call boo bubbles. And in these bouncing smoke bubbles, what happens is we're gonna take dry ice, don't touch it with your hand, but you know. Um, try don't try that at home. So we're gonna take this ice and we're gonna drop it in warm water. It's gonna fog, and when it fogs, it's gonna come out of our funnel, and then they're gonna take it, dip it in some soap water. The soap water will form a layer, of, a bubble layer across the funnel, and so the gas has to go somewhere, so it's gonna go into the bubble, trap the gas inside the bubble, and then we have wool gloves um, right here that they're gonna be holding the bubble because the surface tension on the bubble, if you use your hands, our hands are rough, so the surface tension will break the bubble. But because you wear the wool gloves, it prevents that from happening, so you can actually hold a bubble, okay? So, and sometimes it does take a few times uh, doing this for them to actually get a good consistency with the bubble, and then they'll be able to bounce it on their hands. So I'm gonna leave it to them and let them do the experiment. All right, guys, here you go. Okay, so probably need more ice. Again, don't touch it with your hands. <laughs> Well, Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. we did it. We have a booble. That's so cool. Juggle. <laughs> oh. I got another one. I got another one. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jane Hurley with Central Arkansas Water. I'm here with Taylor and Brindley. They are making a snowman, not of snow, but of shaving cream and salt, a little bit of water, and baking soda. So you might know that baking soda is a high pH, has a high pH property. You're adding a little bit of water just to make it stick and to show you what they were doing. But actually, just like a great cooking show, they've already got what they need prepared. So you guys put your snowman together. So we have the base. Then the middle. And then the head. Okay. And now we're gonna pour vinegar. So over vinegar, the that's, a, that's a low pH solution. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's melting. So the baking soda and the snowman is reacting with the vinegar solution and it's almost gone. Just like Frosty. But not to be back again. All right, good job. Those were some really cool experiments. Check in for more later. Back to y'all in the studio. Wow, thanks guys. Technology is a major part of our everyday lives, but did you know that Cabot High School has its very own robotics class? Now we go to Dylan Jobes and Xander Hill with more robotics. I'm joined here today by robotics and engineering teacher, Mr. Glover at Cabot High School. What would you say that robotics teaches these, are your students? Uh, well, the most important thing is teamwork. We, it's a big proponent of what we do in my classes, and that's also a big proponent in robotics because the kids, they get an objective to do in the competition and they have to work together to design the bot, build the bot, test the bot, and then they work together at the competition. Every student's doing something different. Um, and then 
it robotics allows you to bring in your skills your what you like to do you don't necessarily have to be really good at building you could be a good coder well we need those uh, if you don't like coding but you like building well we have a place for you there too so and if you don't like doing either of those you like taking pictures or you like drawing then we have a place for you on that as well so it brings in all those things and how would engineering help these students well in engineering it just depends on the course you're talking about but overall we work as a team and a lot of stuff which obviously this year it looks a little different but uh, having you know willing to work with others willing to think outside the box critical think be creative, um, do all those different, you know, skills that I feel like are very important to be successful in life in general, but being successful in my classes is very important to have. And how can these students prepare for your class? Oh, well, just being willing to learn, honestly, is the biggest thing for me. You don't have to be, you know, wanting to go to engineering in college or whatever, or become an engineer in life to take my classes. Uh, my classes are really fun because they allow you to just be creative in your own way, and there's there are due dates for stuff but not at the same time it's kind of very flexible a lot of times in my class um, but being able to stay on task do your job based on whatever constraints or rules i give you and that's really what we look for if you're able to do that and not have to be walked step by step you're a lot more successful and you enjoy it a lot more and lastly what would you say is the most fun project that you have hmm. well it depends on the course um in my first year course, we have about two or three that are really fun. My favorite one's probably where they get to design their own puzzle cube on the software. And then once they're done designing it, they get to build it and test it with everybody in class and get to take them home. In my third year or my second year course, we do a lot of robotics, so that's a lot of fun. And then third year, we get to build a lot of different types of houses. I mean, they get to build it on the software. They even get to dream, build their dream house with their partners in their class and design some really cool stuff. It really depends on the kid because everybody builds differently and designs their houses differently and puts different things in it or whatever, but it really depends on the course, honestly. Thank you for the insight, Mr. Glover. And now to Xander Hill with Leighton Spencer. I'm here with Leighton Spencer, a senior here at Cabot High School. He takes engineering and he's going to tell you about a couple of things that he uh, does every day in class. So Leighton, can you tell us about uh, what you learn in engineering? Uh, engineering teaches you a lot of problem solving skills and it helps a lot with uh, planning and um, being able to see a project fully through. Awesome, and um, uh, what are some of the ways that engineering affects our lives every day? Like how um, does it influence our everyday behavior? Um, what you can see is, um, you know, everything that goes into everything around us. So that's from the roads to uh, the buildings that you see. So engineering is not just cars, it's bridges, buildings, skyscrapers. And uh, Layton tells us that he has a couple of things he wants to show us. So what do you got here? Um, so what you see before you is our house. This project was called the Dream House. And what it is, is a house that we've made and it started all the way from our sketches to this 3D modeling that you see before us. And it was a lot of fun. Awesome, and uh, before we go, can you tell us a couple of things that these kids should know if they wanna take engineering? Um, some things to know are it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a lot of project stuff that you see before you and a lot more hands-on stuff too. And if you work your way through it, you'll really start to develop a love for engineering. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. You heard it here, folks. Back to the studio. Now we go back to Evan Tonneson and Avonlea Kelly with Miss Ursery. Hey guys, I'm here outside the next room for the next experiment with Miss Ursery. Miss Ursery, can you tell us a little about the experiment that will be conducted in here? Yes, Avonlea. So we're going to have two experiments that are going to be going on in this back room. And the reason we're going back here is because most of these experiments are going to glow under a black light. So the first thing we're going to do, Avonlea, is we're going to have a volcano, a simple reaction that kids know with baking soda and vinegar. But we put a little twist on it. If you take a, the inside of a highlighter pen and you pull it out, you can soak it in water. And as you can see, you can make what we call a glow-in-the-dark solution and it glows in the dark under a black light. So we're gonna add that and show you what kind of uh, experiment happens when you explode them out uh, using baking soda and vinegar and then uh, glowing under a black light. The second one is going to be what we call the trail of lights. We're gonna have a series of flasks that have different types of luminescent chemicals in there that will glow under a black light. And luminescence, the whole idea behind luminescence is you're mixing things together that 
have a chemical reaction and they glow under a black light. So we're going to be using several chemicals that will glow under a black light that have already been pre-made. And so we're going to kind of show you those one at a time. One of the items that we're going to use, actually you can get at the local grocery store, which is tonic water. So we'll be going in here and looking at the trail of lights. Now to the experiment. Okay, Parker and Harley, go ahead and start with the first ones. Here we have the tray of lights, and these chemical solutions will glow due to chemical luminescence. First up, we have tonic water. Ooh. <laughs> and next, we have fluorescein. Yes. <laughs> then we have EYCEN. <laughs> Grayson, hit us with the last one. <laughs> Rota me. <laughs> what do you guys think about these? Cool. 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 Those experiments were awesome. Now back to you guys in the studio. Everyone loves drones, but here at Cabot High School, we have a student who owns his very own drone business. We go to Jack Starnes with Logan Williams and his drones. Thanks, you guys. Welcome to another part of STEM Night. Uh, right now, we got. Uh, our friend Logan, Logan, uh, he has drones, he has um, all kinds of stuff he does with drones. Uh, Logan, what do you do like just with these and with your other drones? So these drones are mainly used for videography, um, getting shots from above, and um, I use them to incorporate into my business uh, where I make videos for different events, you know, weddings, all kinds of stuff. So you said you had a business. Um, other than weddings, like do you do anything you know, maybe around here or, you know, just at your house, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, I've done, I've done a ton of, ton of local stuff, a lot of cross-country meets, um, a lot of stuff for my church, and then I do stuff for my mom, too, uh, for the Chamber of Commerce, just all the new developments in town. All right, so, Logan, these kids are in middle school, so what would you say for these middle schoolers, what would they need to do, or maybe it, maybe they're interested in something, what would a pinpoint be for them to be like, oh yeah, maybe I should do drones, or maybe I should get a drone and just try it out or something? Obviously getting in engineering classes and uh, upper grades is a, is a good idea, but how I got into it was YouTube, strictly YouTube. Do your research, um, learn about what you like to do, and then you can do it. All right. Um, I'm sure y'all have been waiting. Uh, Logan, you want to show us some, just some of your drones and like just fly it around maybe for us? You know, it looks like the drone is doing a lot while it's in the air. You guys could see, uh, you could see some of that footage right now. I can just imagine this, this could pick up, I'm, I'm sure this picks up like from a wide range. Like you could see a ton of stuff just from that camera. Yep, um, I've even flow it, flown it above my house. You could see almost out of town as, as far as you can go. That's crazy. That's crazy stuff. So, I mean, if y'all, I mean, I know y'all are in middle school, but like he said, if, if you guys want to get into this stuff and you really like making videos maybe, or just really want to get started, we have engineering classes at the high school where they do drones, they do all kinds of stuff. But um, Logan, thank you. Thank you for having us out today. Um, back to y'all in the studio. Now it's time for our third portion of tonight's science events. Hey guys, I'm here about to see a fantastic light show. Can you tell us a little about these experiments? 
Yes, Avonlea. So these are chemical luminescence experiments. So when you take two chemicals and you mix them together, they energize the electrons. When these electrons are falling back down into their ground state, they give off the energy in which they um, got as a part of the chemical reaction. Sometimes people think energy is just heat and fire and things like that, but a lot of times we have energy in the form of light. And so that's what you guys are about to see. You're going to see these cool light experiments. The first one is called the eerie light, and it's going to have a glow to it um, when you turn out the lights, and so it's going to glow a green color, and it's going to go all the way down the tube. The second one that we're going to see is called the cool light, and I'm actually going to re-energize that cool light once we pour it into the fl into the flask and it funnels into the bottle. We're going to re-energize that one. So you guys are about to see two really cool reactions with chemical luminescence, and it's all based on electrons jumping back and forth between different energy levels. Let's get to the experiments. All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, I have two people with me. This is uh, Faith. Faith and Parker Johns. Parker's in middle school, and Faith is a sophomore here at Cabot High School, and she's in one of my uh, she's in my STEM club as one of my STEM students, and they're going to be doing a demonstration called energetic light, and what that means is exactly what it says, energized light. Okay, so this one is going to it can last up to ten minutes, and what's going on in this particular experiment? is the hydrogen peroxide that's in there is going to oxidize, okay? And it's going to produce a really pretty color when these two are mixed together. And these electrons are going to jump up and down. And this is called the eerie light because it gives off this eerie color of light. Um, so Parker's going to start off with the first solution and pour it in there. And Faith's going to help him a little bit. All right, good job, Parker. Now Faith is gonna, Parker's gonna step down and Faith's gonna step up here. And then she's gonna release that after she pours all the solution in, then she's gonna release it. So wait till you pour all of it in. All right. And as you can see, it's traveling down and it's siphoning through and producing a snake. Faith, what do you think about that? It's pretty cool. What do you think, Parker? You like this? Yeah. It's energetic, right? It's energized. The solution is traveling down and siphoning through. And there you have it, folks, the Eerie Light Show. All right, I am here with Faith Wallace, one of my CHS STEM students, um, and we are performing some experiments for the virtual STEM night. And this one is called the Cool Light. Cool Light meaning most of the time, chemical reactions produce energy. But a lot of times when we do that, you use a Bunsen burner or you use something to heat up the energy. Well, in this case, we're using two liquids in which, feel them, Faith, are they they're pretty... They're pretty cold yeah. in, in, in touch, right? So that's why it's called the cool light because it's gonna produce energy and it's gonna do it in a way that's cooler than most. And sometimes they call that endothermic because it's absorbing the energy, right? It's absorbing that heat and it's getting a little colder. Um, kind of like when you guys get a, a hurt arm or something like that and you take that little ice pack and you punch it together and you mix those chemicals and it turns into a cold ice pack. So it's kind of like very similar to that, but this time it's gonna glow in the dark, okay? So Faith is gonna pour these in simultaneously and we are going to see what happens okay oops Look at that cool light. It's kind of neat when we call it cool light too because it's blue. <laughs> so, you know, when it's cold outside, you know, they say, ooh, cold blue. We're going to call it cold blue instead of cool light. Faith, your arm's getting tired there? <laughs> yeah. 
Those were some amazing experiments. Back to you guys in the studio. Here at Cabot High School, we have a very advanced agricultural program. Let's go to Lindsay Haig to show you guys a little bit more. Hey everyone, I'm right outside of the agricultural department here with Isabella and Allie. And Allie, what would you say to future fifth and sixth graders that are wanting to enter, enter into this agricultural realm? So after STEM night, they will be provided a hydroponic tower, which they will be able to harvest lettuce, check pH, also maintain and keep it clean. They will get to learn more hands-on experiences with growing certain vegetables. Okay, and here at CHS, we have a greenhouse. So Isabella, would you tell us a little bit about that? Our greenhouse is our controlled environment for us to grow plants um, in an environment where we can tr control our humidity, our um, temperatures, and really have these plants be grown in the best environment possible. Okay, and I believe they have a demonstration for us over the hydroponic towers, so let's go to that. What is a viable solution when you don't have enough ground surface for growing plants? Vertical farming. Here we have a hydroponic tower. It uses the combination of vertical farming and water to efficiently grow plants. Using these hydroponic towers, we can control the environment, the water, and the nutrients that goes into these plants. So with these hydroponic towers, since they don't use soil, they use water and certain nutrients like macro, macro minerals, which are the larger portion of what the plants need and the micros are what they really don't depend on as much as the macros. Inside this water reservoir there is a pump that then comes up the middle of this tower and disperses to these little cups. It starts out with these little rock wool cubes and a little seed and once they get to one to two inches they are then put into the net cups that have clay pebbles that hold the water and allow it to get certain amounts of water. There's also these lights attached to it which allows the plant to get equal amount of sunlight, or not since sunlight, but light that it would use in any other way. Um, we also check the pH about once a week, so that way we know if there's too much acid or too much base that is in this. Um, we just use water and these drops down here. That's about it. Um, and as you see, we've already got new growth, and these were put in here just the other day. Thank you, Allie and Isabel, for that demonstration. Now back to you guys in the studio. Cool. Thanks, Lindsay. Now it's time for us to go back to Evan Tonneson and Avonlea Kelly with the last of tonight's science demonstrations and the grand finale. We're here with the grand finale. Miss Urshree, can you tell us what's going to be happening? Yes, Evan, we are going to be making a thundercloud. Now what is that? It is liquid nitrogen thrown rapidly into a bucket of hot water. Most of the atmosphere is made of several different types of gases. Nitrogen is one of those gases. Now when you cool nitrogen down um, under very, very uh, laboratory conditions, you're going to get the liquid nitrogen at 100, negative 198 degrees Celsius, which is 198 times colder than a piece of ice. So we're gonna throw this into the hot water and it's gonna make a cloud, like a thunder cloud, and it's gonna fog all around the bucket to where we're standing. So you guys ready for the finale? I, I believe we are. Well, here we go. Jane, you ready? Yep. All right, here we go. And here we are, grand finale. And that concludes our science experiments. Back to y'all in the studio. Thank you so much for tuning into the Cabot High STEM Night. Once again, I'm Paige Rudiger. And I'm Evan Crow. Have a good night, everyone.